Okay, last piece of gear I want to talk about. Again, I implore you guys, uh, the second Josh from Ham Radio Crash Course does his video, when he gets this unit, these things are going to be unobtainium. When S2 Underground realizes that this thing is an amazing $135 transceiver for field ops, for JSA call, and a few other select modes, these will be gone. Uh, in fact, I just bought the high band version for 12, 15, 17, and 20 meters to give me different capabilities. Um, it, it just This thing just blows my mind of how amazing it is. I mean, literally, it's BNC, which is the standard that I have adopted for all the field work. It has DC in, and what I'm using for charging this guy or running this guy is the Talent Cell 3000 milliamp hour battery. This would probably be my top Amazon store pick. The cool thing about this device, uh, the battery pack, is that it's 3000 milliamp hour. It has a barrel connector. It's like a the 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter connector, and it works directly. Uh, do I have a cable here? There's a male to male patch lead I have somewhere online and it connects these two. And the cool thing about it is that the QDX does, is designed to run on 12 volts. Unlike the lithium iron phosphate batteries that run, I think at like 3.8 nominal voltage, which is too high and probably will damage the QDX. The talent cell runs at 12.6 volts. And in this configuration, I am personally getting 3.8 watts out on 40 meters. I am beaconing a transmission, full duty cycle transmission every 15 minutes on JSA call. And I'm running the station from 5 a.m. daily until 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. And I'm only used 60% of this battery. So gear wise, this is my absolute must have field gear. Um, and then you get 5 volt USB, so you can also charge other devices in the field. So I have about six of these battery packs. Now, people keep on asking, what purpose does the QDX fit since all it does is single tone FSK modes? So to boil it down, this thing really will just do JSA call, FT8, and a couple of the modes on FL Digi uh, that are used by other organizations like Amron. It will not do Winlink. It will not do VARA. But that's not the point of this device. This is a way of not tying up your $1,000 HF transceiver. I can leave this running in the shack 12 hours a day unattended. It takes almost no power. And I wouldn't even connect my TTP link dipole. I literally would create a monoband dipole with a cobra head and just deploy that outside to have this thing running on a $50 laptop. I would buy an old Lenovo and for about 200 bucks all in, you have a HF station where you can have a path like Mike and I have point to point. And this is where I see the future of, of preparedness because when coupled with JSA call, we have the ability for Mike and I to have a bi-directional conversation in real time. If for some reason him and I can't hear us, we have the ability to use a relay, like a third party that can hear both of us to message that. But even more powerful, both of us don't have to be online at the same time. We can have, we can store messages for each other on other stations we both can hear and be completely offline. In fact, that's how we were able to stay in touch, even though our targeted comma window failed because of an issue I had on my side. So this thing is purpose-built. And the question I want to bring up is, why not the true SDX? And I'll tell you why not. The true SDX has this, is a full SSB transceiver. It does voice, but it requires that you plug in a sound card. So you need something like the DigiRig. And if you've seen the photos of people using the true SDX, you have cables everywhere. This thing, like I said, I, I have a picture. Let me actually show you what it looks like running here. As you can see here, we've got the battery pack. I used Velcro to connect it to the QDX, and then I have a little uh, six inch male to male DC cable. And then there's a single USB cable that goes into the system. And there's a little blinky light. I mean, this thing will not intimidate anybody. So when people ask, what's the vision for MCOM tools? It's this, it's an appliance. The next logical step I wanna get to 
is that this entire kit is one system. It is literally the radio. But uh, the true SDX from what I've seen, yeah, it gives you more capabilities, but it requires an operator to do more things, has more components that can fail, more wires. And truth be told, if I'm going to use something like the true SDX, I'm going to use my Yasu FT818 and D-Man pack. 